Meiosis has a lot in common with mitosis. Like mitosis, it's a process where the nucleus divides. However, the main difference is that where mitosis results in a more or less exact copy of the chromosomes, meiosis results in producing a cell with exactly half of the DNA as the parent. And this process is how sexual reproduction occurs. It's how the gametes of organisms are created. From a single cell, meiosis produces four daughter cells, each with half of the DNA. But each has a different combination of chromosomes. Meiosis is sex, and sex is the main factor that has allowed such tremendous diversification of species to develop on Earth. Before sex, organisms could only evolve by chance mutations. But with sex, organisms can swap half of their genome with another organism in order to produce an offspring. This is thought to have been important because it provides the next population of offspring that, as a whole, is more genetically variable than without sex. If an organism only produced clones of themselves, genetic variability is tremendously decreased compared to sexual species. And these species are less likely to be able to resist a changing world, like disease outbreaks or environmental extremes. Everyone knows you look the way you do because your parents gave you your genes. And it's fun to ponder, I must have gotten dad's genes for height and my mom's genes for my nose. And genes do have a lot to do with those traits. The official definition of a gene is a section of DNA that influences one or more hereditary traits of an individual. And each gene is made up of two alleles. You got one allele from your mom and one allele from your dad. An allele is nothing more than a different version of the same gene. For example, your mom may have given you an allele for black hair, whereas your dad may have given you an allele for blonde hair. In humans, we have 46 chromosomes. 23 came from your mother, and 23 came from your father. That is, unless you're a clone. The complete set of chromosomes of an organism is called its karyotype. Of the 23 unique chromosomes you got from each parent, each one pairs up precisely with its partner from your other parent. This pairing is called a homologous pair. And sometimes homologous pairs are called homologs for short. And each homologous pair has hundreds of thousands of genes on it. And each gene is made up of an allele from your mother and an allele from your father. These alleles can be the same, or they can be different. For example, if your mom is blonde and your dad is blonde, there's a strong chance you'll get two alleles for that coat of blonde hair. So both of your alleles for that gene would be the same, but they could also be different. Whenever fertilization happens, meiosis cells become diploid. That means there are two sets of the same chromosome. This is expressed by the term 2N. And since we get 23 sets of chromosomes from each parent, humans have 46 total chromosomes. But shorthand, we can write this as 2N equals 46. And the whole point of meiosis is to make sex cells. The fancy biology word for sex cell is its gamete. A gamete of a human is called a sperm or an egg, and it has half the set of chromosomes a human needs to survive. And this is a haploid cell. And in humans, we have 22 chromosomes that are known as autosomes and one sex chromosome. And the sex chromosome is the one that determines whether you're an any or an outie. If you got two X chromosomes, you're a lady. And if you got an X chromosome and a Y chromosome, you're a dude. And get this, it's all determined by the man. Only a man can produce Y chromosomes during meiosis. And during meiosis, he produces half X's and half Y's. Women can only produce X chromosomes. Just before meiosis occurs, the nuclear envelope breaks down, and the chromosomes duplicate to produce sister chromatids. This process is identical to mitosis. To understand meiosis, it's critical to understand the relationship between chromosomes and sister chromatids. An unreplicated chromosome consists of a single DNA molecule while a replicated chromosome consists of two sister chromatids. An unreplicated chromosome is a single thread, and a replicated chromosome is paired. The trick to recognize that both unreplicated and replicated chromosomes 
are considered single chromosomes, even though replicated chromosomes have two copies. So make sure you understand that. Meiosis has two main parts, and they're known as meiosis one and meiosis two. In meiosis one, the homologous pairs separate from each other. One homologous pair goes into one daughter cell, and another homologous pair goes into another. In this picture, the homologous pair that came from the organism's mother is red, whereas the homologous pair that came from the father is colored blue. The end result of meiosis one is that the two daughter cells have one type of chromosome, not two. To be more specific about it, we can say that during meiosis one, the diploid parent produces two haploid daughter cells. However, each of the daughter cells have chromosomes with two sister chromatids, meaning that the chromosomes are still replicated. In meiosis two, those sister chromosomes in the daughter cells separate from each other. Now the cells produced in meiosis two also have one of each type of chromosome, but this time the chromosomes are unreplicated. So you can see that meiosis reduces the number of chromosomes in half. This is so that two different versions of the chromosomes can reunite in order to produce a new organism. This process is known as fertilization. When two gametes fuse during fertilization, a full complement of chromosomes is restored. The cell that results is known as a zygote, and it's diploid. In this way, each diploid zygote receives both a haploid chromosome set from each parent. Throughout the life of an organism, they grow and develop through mitosis. That is, until they're ready to procreate. At this point, the hereditary material must be reduced in half. If you understand the phases of mitosis, understanding the phases of meiosis is really pretty easy. If not, I'd recommend backtracking and reviewing your notes in order to understand the phases of mitosis in detail before trying to figure out meiosis. In the first stage of meiosis one, known as early prophase one, the nuclear envelope disintegrates as the chromosomes condense from a spaghetti-like substance into visible, dense, linear structures. In addition, the spindle apparatus begins to form, and this is where the microtubules begin to grow from the centrioles, much like in my mitosis. Also at this time, the homologous pairs come together. The structure that results is known as a tetrad, which consists of two homologous chromosomes attached to each other. The chromatids from different homologous pairs are known as non-sister chromatids. These are shown as red and blue. One is from the father and the other one's from the mother. But all four of these lines of chromosomes combine in one called the tetrad. One from the mother, one from the father, but you gotta multiply them times two. So really it's two from the mother and two from the father. During late prophase one, the non-sister chromatids begin to separate at several points along their length. But they stay joined at certain locations and look like they cross over one another. The points where the non-sister chromatids cross are called chiasmata. It is thought that this point crossing over happens. It is hypothesized that crossing over of non-sister chromosomes at chiasmata is when a physical exchange of paternal and maternal chromosomes occur. This hypothesis suggests that the non-sister chromatids break and rejoin at each chiasma, producing chromatids that have both paternal and maternal segments. Crossing over occurs, the chromosomes that result have a mixture of alleles from both parents, and these are known as recombinant chromosomes. And you can kind of think of recombinant chromosomes that are chromosomes that have re been recombined with two different lineages, one from the mom and one from the dad. The next stage is metaphase one. This is when the microtubules from the centrioles move the tetrads to a region in the middle of the nucleus known as the metaphase plate. However, it's important to realize that the alignment of the maternal and paternal homologs from each chromosome is random. If it wasn't, you'd be a lot more like your mom or your dad than some random combination of both. During anaphase one, the homologous chromosomes in each tetrad separate and begin to move to opposite sides of the cell. 
This happens by constricting the microtubules from the centrioles. Meiosis I ends with telophase I, when the homologous pairs finish moving to the opposite sides of the cell. After this, then, the rest of the cell separates into two haploid daughter cells, and now meiosis II begins. The end result of meiosis I is that one chromosome of each homologous pair is distributed to a different daughter cell. This means that there's a reduction division has occurred. Each cell has exactly half of the number of chromosomes as a diploid. Therefore, each cell is haploid. Throughout meiosis I, the sister chromatids remain attached. So at the beginning of meiosis II, each chromosome consists of two sister chromatids. And because each homologous pair of chromosomes is present, the cell is haploid. Meiosis begins with prophase II. During this phase, the spindle apparatus forms in both of the daughter cells, and the microtubules attach back to the chromosomes. In metaphase II, the replicated, recombined chromosomes line up at the metaphase plate of each of the daughter cells. And in anaphase II, the sister chromatids separate and begin to move towards the opposite sides of the cell. Then finally, in telophase II, the chromosomes arrive at opposite ends of the cell, and the nuclear envelope reappears around the haploid chromosome, and the cytosol splits, forming four haploid daughter cells from the two diploid daughter cells. Mitosis and meiosis are very similar, but also distinctly different. It's important to know how they're the same and how they're different. In meiosis, homologous chromosomes pair to form tetrads. This doesn't happen in mitosis. Also, meiosis forms four daughter cells that have half as much genetic information as the parents, and they're haploid. Whereas mitosis produces two daughter cells, but they're genetically identical to the parent cells, and they're diploid. Humans produce gametes, eggs and sperm, through the process of meiosis. Here, We'll follow the production of male gametes by focusing on this cell as it goes through meiosis. Let's begin in the nucleus, where genetic information is stored in chromosomes. Most of a person's cells are diploid, with two sets of chromosomes. One set is from their mother, shown here in red, and the other set is from their father, shown in blue. Each maternal chromosome has a corresponding paternal chromosome. These matched pairs are called homologous chromosomes. During interphase, chromosomes are duplicated. Each chromosome now consists of two identical copies called sister chromatids. Zooming in, we see that each sister chromatid is made up of DNA wound around histone proteins. Each strand coils up into a tight helical fiber. As meiosis begins, a spindle forms and duplicated centrosomes start to migrate toward opposite poles of the cell. Back in the nucleus, the chromosomes are condensing. In meiosis, homologous chromosomes stick together in pairs. The close association of homologous chromosomes allows segments of non-sister chromatids to trade places. This recombination of maternal and paternal genetic material is a key feature of meiosis. After the spindle forms and the nuclear envelope breaks down, microtubules from opposite poles attach to each chromosome of the homologous pair, resulting in a tug-of-war. At metaphase I, the chromosome pairs are positioned in the middle of the cell. The next stage begins when homologous chromosomes separate from each other and move toward opposite poles. Each chromosome still consists of two sister chromatids. This cell began meiosis with 46 chromosomes, but each daughter cell now has only 23 chromosomes. In meiosis II, 
microtubules from opposite poles attach to the chromosomes, which then move to the center of the cell. Next, the sister chromatids separate, becoming full-fledged chromosomes that move to opposite poles. Nuclear envelopes reform, and each daughter cell divides into two cells. We started with a single diploid cell, and now that meiosis is complete, we have four haploid cells, cells with a single set of chromosomes. These haploid cells mature into gametes that can contribute to the next generation.